Hi, welcome back to the jokes application in the security edition. The first thing I want to do is point out that we're going to add a new feature to this jokes application. We're going to add a users table and then we're going to try to log in with the app with a username and password. Before we do though, you notice on my screen I have a new web server. So instead of using the Windows version that I did in the previous videos, I'm now using the MAMP server. And so it works just like the other. It has an Apache and a MySQL server unit in it. And so if I start up the main web page, you can see that I have the same ideas. I can have the uh, PHP my admin, and the, hopefully it looks the same. The administration should allow me to add and remove different uh, parts to the application. So I look through my list of all of my schemas that are in here, and you can see that I have been working on others. But here is the jokes application. So I have the jokes table, and you can see I have a few jokes. So this is where we left off. Now we're going to add a new tool that allows us to add a users table to this application. So instead of just creating one here, I'm going to use a different application. So what you see on the screen here is called MySQL Workbench. Workbench is a tool that allows you to make more uh, complicated or more complex different type of designs. Now you're going to need to download this tool to make this application work. So I'm going to search for MySQL Workbench I'm going to choose the download section and near the bottom you can see that there are different versions for it. So I'm choosing the Mac OS because that's what I'm running now, but it will also work on Windows. So download and get this installed. Once it's installed you'll have this screen come up here that says welcome. So now let's make a connection to our database. You can see I have two connections that are saved here, however if you wanted to make one for your own you click on this plus sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is name this connection and the port number. Right now it says 3306. If I were to check in my MAMP server and I look for the port number that it's running on, I can go to, to the preferences. Preferences and ports. You can see that the Apache port runs at 8888. The SQL port, where the database is, runs on port 8889. So I'm going to use 8889 to connect. So let's cancel here, come back into my application, and where it says port number, let's type in three eights and a nine. Let's test the connection. It's asking me to log in. So on MAMP, the password is root and root. And it says it is connected. Good. So I'm going to click OK. Now you can see that I have a new uh, connection here. So if I double click on this, I have now connected to the database. So what am I going to do with this thing? I want to, first of all, get the data that's out in the database right now. So I'm going to choose an option called Reverse Engineer. Reverse Engineer will go and grab all the tables that are there. So I've got one table, it's the jokes table. Let's see, I'm going to, I could probably just select one of these and it automatically provides the port number. Yes, it does. Click Continue. Let's log in and we should see a success. The next screen says select the schemas you want to include and you can see jokes is here That's the application that I'm working on right now All of these are from other projects that I've done in other classes So we'll ignore the others. Okay, we're continuing and it says here you're going to import one object and so we'll execute that and Let's see what happens continue and close all right, so what you see now is a screen that is a designer view this is where you can show a schema and connections between them. So we have one table in our database right now called the jokes database. And let's see if I expand this little menu here, you can see the jokes table is listed here. Now I'm going to add a new table. So let's go to this little icon that looks like a little square and the uh, hover says place a new table here. So let's click here and drag it out or just click on the screen. Now table one is its name, so let's double click it and we can modify things. So let's think, this thing is going to be called the users. And the columns that we're going to put in here are going to be the ID of the user. So first of all, this is a primary key. So let's do a check here. It has to be not null. And I'm going to check AI, which stands for auto increment. You can see down here are the expanded definitions of these uh, initials up here. Each user is going to have a username. So let's put in username. 
And let's see, the var char is set for the default value. Let's change that to 100 characters. And let's also double click here and add password. And my passwords can be up to 100 units long as well. All right, so that's the new table. Let's close it. So the new table definition is here. Now we want to make these two actually link together because a user will be the owner of a joke. So to make tables link together, you use these symbols here that says one colon n. That stands for the relationship. A one-to-many relationship is what we're choosing. So there's two different options. One's called a non-identifying relationship and the other one is an identifying relationship. And so either one of these will work for our case. So I'm going to choose the identifying. I'm going to click on it. I select the jokes table with another click and then the users table with a third click. And you can see that there is now a link between them. Also, if I click on here, you can see the relationship between the tables. So the user's ID is the foreign key to the jokes table. Automatically in the jokes table, it created this last item called users underscore ID. And so we'll see what that looks like, but that means that users are now owners of jokes. We'll see how that works in the application. But for right now, we're done. We're going to forward engineer this or synchronize. Either one of these will work. I'm going to try synchronize and let's go through the list here of options. So what we're doing is we're writing these changes to the database. So I'm going to continue. It looks like I have to log in. And as I go through here, it'll say you want to up update the uh, jokes app. And let's see what happens. I should see the update now. So jokes table is being updated. There's one change. Users table is also being updated. And the original had n didn't even exist. So let's go ahead and continue this. What you see now is a list of changes that are about to be applied. So if you see a, a bunch of text here, that's a good thing. And let's click Execute. And let's close. All right, so if everything worked out, that's perfect. You've got yourself a new updated database. If it didn't work out, I'm going to show you some errors that may have occurred. First of all, let's take, take a look here at the uh, database and refresh it. So right now I'm in jokes. If I refresh, I should see now that it has a users table. The users table has no data in it and the jokes table should have a new column. It's called users ID and they're all listed at zero. So we don't have any users and so the users ID has been filled in with a default value. You may have had an error though. So let's take a look at the version number of SQL that is running on our server and in our tools. So if you had an error, let's go check out, see so what some of these settings are. So I'm going back to my MAMP server and check on the preferences and check on the MySQL version. You can see that the active version in this web server is 5.7.25. Okay, just keep that in mind. Now let's go into our MySQL workbench. I'm also going to check the preferences and go down to modeling and MySQL. And you can see that I have the default version set at 5.7.25. This has to match. So if you don't match with what you're running on your web server, the SQL might be slightly out of date and it won't uh, actually execute properly. So double check to see if those are there. Okay, let's add one user or so, and then we'll be ready to move on. So let's go into my table here and notice that there are no records yet. So we'll insert one. So I'm gonna insert one called Shad and his password is called password. I'm going to increase another one. I'm going to call it Bob, and his password is secret123. And let's go. And you can see that the uh, execution has been done. Let's go browse, and you can see that I have two users, Shad and Bob. Now, I would also like the jokes table to have an association with these users. So for the first guy, let's say I want to change the... Uh, joke uh, the value of the item here. I want to change this to be Bob. He owns it. And let's go to the second one. I'm going to edit this and let's say Shad gets credit for this joke and so on. So let's give our jokes an owner. So selecting each of them, I just pick the drop down list here. Okay, so now I have a bunch of ones and twos in here. So that tells me who wrote each of these jokes. 
This is a good stoppings part. We're going to move on and add some code to our program in the next video.